Hello and welcome to this video about the Thompson Epstein classification of posterior hip dislocations. So before I start this video, I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed to me. Uh, I really appreciate all of you guys. I come from a background where both of my parents are teachers and I really have a lot of passion doing this and you guys supporting me, it really means a lot to me. Uh, anyways, so uh, this is a 5 grades classification system that used for classification of both chair hip dislocations and it is created in the 1951 and it is based on the severity of associated acetabular fractures as well as the presence of femoral head fractures. So there's two things, the acetabular fractures and the femoral head fractures that this classification is based on. So it is a 5 grade system again, starting with the grade 1 here. So in grade 1, there is a posterior hip dislocation with insignificant posterior wall fragment. Uh, so there is a dislocation here, which is present in all the grades. Uh, but there is insignificant posterior wall fragment. This drawing here shows explain this more. So this is here is the pelvic bone, and this is here the hip bone. This is the uh, femoral head, the femoral neck, the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, and the femoral shaft here. And this drawing shows that there is a dislocation. The femoral head is not sitting in the acetabulum here and in this grade there might be an insignificant uh, insignificant fragments in grade 2 there is a posterior hip dislocation associated with single large posterior wall fragment so this time it is a larger fragment and it is from the posterior wall so this Drawing shows this more, so there is a dislocation, the femoral head is not sitting in the stibulum again, and there is a larger fragment here uh, from the posterior wall. In grade 3, there is a posterior hip dislocation associated with a comminuted posterior wall fr fracture, with or without a large major fragment. So this time it is a comminuted posterior wall fracture. So this drawing shows this more. So there is a there is a large fracture and there is a community of fragments here. And there is also a, a posterior hip dislocations here. In grade 4, there is a posterior hip dislocation and this time it is associated with acetabular floor fracture. And this drawing explains this more. So there is a dislocation, posterior hip dislocation, and this time it is associated with uh, acetabular floor fracture right here. And this fracture is continuous to the other side. In grade 5, there is a posterior hip dislocation, and this time it is associated with a femoral head fracture. Uh, and this drawing explains this more. So there is a posterior hip dislocation right here, and there's also uh, a femoral head fracture. And this is this is classified more by the Pipkin classification of the femoral head fractures. Uh, so in this case, it is a Thompson Epstein type five and it is a Pipkin type 2. I have a video explaining the Pipkin classification more. I'm going to put the link in the video description if you want to understand the Pipkin classification more. 